Let's talk about how state functions are exact differentials. Because they are exact differentials, and I'll tell you in a minute what that means, there are some useful mathematical relationships that we can get out of them. The first state function that we will work with is the one that we've been talking about the most, and that is the internal energy. So just a reminder, we started out with the first law of thermodynamics, which looked like this, that the change in internal energy is due to changes, uh, is due to heat transfer, work done on the system, plus any other work that's been done on the system. And we have mostly forgotten about that term for now, but we will put it on there because it's important. We're going to assume that these processes that we're interested are done reversibly. And in that case, we can rewrite this as negative P dV. And we can then keep in mind, if it's a reversible process, that uh, delta Q divided by T is equal to dS, which lets us rewrite this as del Q equals T dS. And so we can plug that in there. And we end up with an expression for the first law. And this is actually called the combined first and second laws because we have used both in there. So the combined first and second laws is that du equals TDS minus PDV. And uh, one mnemonic device that I like to use is that we can remember that thermodynamics is tedious, and that's how we get this term in here. And really then we should have this plus other work terms on here. This expression right here, with or without the extra work terms on it, is something that we will use again and again and again in this class, and so it is worth um, really being able to, to remember it because we will draw upon it so often. Uh, we're we're going to sort of look at an example with this later, and so one other work term that we can use that I will add on here right now is the chemical potential. And if you've heard of this before, great. If you haven't, don't worry about it, but you can think about it as being sort of the uh, energy associated with adding more of a particular species into the system. And this is dN, where N is the number of moles. This is the number of moles, and this is the chemical potential. So we're going to come back to this in a minute, but let's uh, next talk about what is an exact differential and sort of why is that useful to us. So let's consider as an example that we have some function v, okay? And you can think of v as whatever you want. v can vary with x, y, and c, okay? Um, and so let's say that this is sort of our initial state, and then let's consider that we have some final state, and the system has moved basically a, an infinitesimal distance to now be at v of x plus dx. So we've moved a little bit in x, a little bit in y, and a little bit in z. And if we want to know the, f the change in v that results dv from this change, then this is simply the difference in these two values. We can uh, rewrite this, though, as the total differential which looks like this. So we first look at sort of the change in V with respect to X at constant Y and Z times DX and the change 
change in v with respect to y at constant x and z dy, and the change in v with respect to z at constant x and y dz. So this expression here is the total differential, and we can say that dv is an exact differential. The way that we know that this is exact, or rather the way that this is defined to be exact, is that it is exact if basically there if we can write it in the following way, dv is m dx plus n dy plus p dz, and then there has to be some function v for which it is the case that m is defined like this, and n is defined as dv dy, and p is defined as dv, dz. Okay? So, you can see that we have written this sort of in two different ways here. We have this expression here, which has the partial derivatives written right in it. We have this expression here. So basically, if we have an expression of this form, so of the form like this, you might compare this with how we just wrote the first law, right? So if we have this form, it is true that V or U is an exact differential, basically, if the coefficients can be defined in this way, okay? And these expressions that I've written over here are what we call the coefficient relationships. And sometimes these give us useful information about thermodynamic relationships. Sometimes they give us information that's not particularly intuitive, uh, and sometimes they give us information that is, in fact, intuitive. And we will work with this. So these are the coefficient relationships, and we will look in a minute at an example sort of a of how that works. There is one more property of these uh, exact differentials of st state functions that is worth looking at. So let's rewrite this again. We had that dv is either two ways, mdx plus ndy plus pdz, or the total differential So there is one more relationship that holds true if V is an exact differential, and that is that the order of second derivatives doesn't matter. Right, so whether we do dV, dx, dy, or and let's um, put what's held constant here because that's still important. So this has x and z held constant and then y and z. Or if we do d, d, y, d, d, x, and this has uh, y and z constant and then x and z constant. It doesn't matter, right? So here I want x, then y, and here I want y, then x, and this is still true. And I can then get some interesting relationships because 
if you notice from the coefficient relationships, right, so m is equal to this down here, and n is equal to this, and p is equal to this, right? So dv dy here is n, and dv dx is m. And so then, in fact, I can rewrite this to say dn dx, the constant y and z is equal to dm dy, the constant x and c. And this kind of relationship where I take the second derivatives, right, so I take the second derivatives in either order, and then I replace with the coefficient relationships. So take second derivatives, uh, substitute coefficient relationships. This gives me what is called a Maxwell relationship. And it isn't obvious from here, but we will see in our exercises in class that this can sometimes give you useful information about how thermodynamic variables are related to one another.